Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS and welcome back to another segment of Revamp the Skills. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about today because what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about some designs. We're going to talk about tartan and plaid and check and yes, <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff, even a little bit of washi and then also too a paper pad. Yes, we're going to talk about a little bit of this. We're going to talk about how actually the garment industry influences as to what we use not only in our home but also into our crafting world. And so then we're also going to have a little chit chat about this design you see right here, where it originated and the heavy influence we see today. Love this. So if you want to learn a little bit more about tartans versus plaid versus check, just hang on because I have a little mini crash course. Now, originally this video was going to be inserted into a start to finish layout because I was actually using the plaid pattern, but the video got so long. So here it is. This is a video, a little segment of revamp the skills so let's learn something new today absolutely okay so hang on we will be right back okay so now let's have a little mini crash course a little tutorial on tartan versus plaid versus check when we're talking about these designs and i was originally going to do a video about this but since we're talking about it today in our uh, start to finish i thought why not just throw this in here and then we'll have it for future reference okay so I, the reason i wanted to talk about this is because it is a three different designs, I think, that is thrown into one bowl and one hat. But at the end of the day, they are three different designs. Okay, we're going to talk about that. Now, if this is something you don't want to see, you don't want to learn about, that's okay. And just skip to the end of the video and see the finished layout. Okay? But, you know, I'm all about learning and sharing. I love to learn. Love, love, love to learn. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about tartans first, okay? And the reason I want to talk about tartans first is because I think you can't talk about plaid or uh, check patterns until you talk about tartans because this to me is where it all started. Yes, okay. Now tartans are basically in what we think today of you think of a Scottish plaid kilt that is what we think of a tartan you know that's what we think of and that's really basically what it is because a tartan is basically known in the scottish culture for their kilts because of that how is how they knew and designated which clan they belong to because each clan has a different tartan the tartan design okay so when you think of tartan a mini a quick way to think of a tartan versus a plaid okay is that a tartan is always uh, multicolored usually okay and also what you see in the vertical axis is exact replicated in the horizontal axis okay and that is the meaning of a tartan okay now uh, I was looking at this uh, I don't know last year or something you know I'm always reading something and the tartan design is over 3,000 years old. That is mind boggling, okay? So it's funny how something that was created or designed way back then is still influenced and we're using today. I, I just love that, okay? So when you think of tartan, multicolor, and what you see on the vertical axis is exact replicated on the horizontal. That is a quick way to know the difference between a tartan and a plaid. Okay, so and here's a couple more, and then also too about tartans when they inter uh, when the colors intersect. Sometimes you'll see a different variation of color. Again, that would be another example of a tartan, and then here's another one. Okay, and you can see what is exact here is exactly replicated in the horizontal format. Okay, now I'm going to talk about tartans for a little bit more because I have a few more. But when we think of tartans, and we think usually of that Scottish plaid kilt. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And I'll talk about this pad here again in just a little bit. But here are a few more samples of what I have for tartans. And again, I think these words are used interchangeably. And sometimes uh, the waters can get a little muddled, but you know, you're gonna get a general sense, okay? So whatever you see, and whenever we're talking about tartan, plan, or plaid, or gingham, you're gonna find everything in a grid fashion. That's how you know <laughs> it falls into this category. So you can see definitely a, a grid. And what you see in a vertical, absolutely the same exact thing in the horizontal. That's a tartan, okay? And if anybody wants to know what these are, uh, some by Cartabella, some by My Mind's Eye, by Photoplay. I just kind of went through my inventory just to give a little example. Again, here's some more beautiful, again, multicolor, okay? 
beautiful beautiful okay this is just a little flip through of some tartans okay beautiful and this is by uh actually cartabella has a couple collections and they're called tartans and uh, i think they, ha they have a one and a two okay now i do feel that some that's in that uh, collection is not a true tartan but hey it's a general sense of things okay it's all lovely no matter what you give it okay again this is a true tartan look at this exact replication of whether the vertical axis or the horizontal that is a tartan okay again and you see how they all make grids okay whether you're talking about checks plaids or tartan it all creates a grid again multi-color exact replicate again same and same okay and those are just as that's a loose tartan okay and again and again this is from the cartabella they have two collections of tartans okay so that is the tartan so now let's talk about plaids okay so plaid you would say well what's the difference okay there is a difference because plaid is a i'm gonna call it a knockoff version of the tartan <laughs> yes because plaid really was created if I remember everything correctly, again, you know, I, I, this is just stuff I learned over the years, is that the British and the American manufacturers wanted the tartan designs, but you know, some of those are copyrighted by the actual Scottish clan. So what the American and British, I'm not going to throw British in there, I'm going to throw American, <laughs> but anyways, the American and British manufacturers wanted that tartan look. So that's where they replicated that. And that is where plaid came from. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now I want to say something about plaid and that's some beautiful papers here about plaid. Okay. Plaid in the original sense of the word means blanket. So again, when we think of a Scottish plaid kilt, what did they use the kilts for? They not only wore them around the waist, they threw them over the shoulder. Again, if you watch Outlander, you know what I'm talking about because they did use them as blankets for warmth and that type of thing. So the word plaid actually means blanket. Oh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? So, uh, plaid is uh, basically a replication, a knockoff of the original Tartish Tartan versions uh, that the Scottish uh, clans use. Okay. I love all that. Love learning all of this. Okay. And so, you can definitely tell that there is a difference in plaid versus tartan because plaid will have different variations of width and also the size okay so it's not that exact what you see on the vertical is exactly what you see on the horizontal that is a plaid okay and you can definitely see plaid and plaid and plaid okay so isn't that interesting that the word plaid means blanket yes <laughs> i just find that interesting i really really do okay again more plaid okay and you can definitely tell because there's no exact design here in the vertical versus the horizontal horizontal vertical okay that is plaid and a lot of us know what plaid is uh, but i don't think a lot of us know what a true tartan is okay and so some would say well that's not a tartan uh no that's a plaid <laughs> okay more plaids just beautiful these are different manufacturers again i have a lot of this in my inventory okay and do i have a separate category for plaids at one time i did at one time, I threw them in a multicolor because I didn't know. Now, I throw them in plaids. Yes, that's just what I call it. Okay. Again, more beautiful. This is Jen Hatfield. And it's actually called Perfect Plaid. And that is an exa a perfect example of a plaid. Yes, because. Definitely, definitely. Okay. And more plaid. Okay. Now, when we're talking about tartans. Okay. Okay. See? A tartan versus a plaid. We also run into this. We run into diagonals, okay? Now, I may not know this correctly, but this is what I'm going to say. I don't think I've ever seen a tartan that was in a diagonal sense, okay? So whenever you see something that's in a diagonal, I would say that all falls into the plaid category, okay? Because I've never seen a diagonal tartan, but I could be wrong on that, okay? So if you see a, a, a directional, like a diagonal, throw that into the plaid category. Beautiful, beautiful. And see again, here's these Cartabella papers. Now see, they have those in the tartan, and they might have just put this on the B side as an option, but to me, that's not a tartan, that's a plaid, but that's my opinion, okay? So that is tartan versus play it let's go to the original one that we all know and love okay let's go to this okay tartan versus a play it and then a diagonal play it okay 
So the reason why they're used interchangeably is because plaids are a knockoff version of the Scottish tartans, okay? Yes, that's what the American and the British did. <laughs> they wanted that tartan look, and so they did the replicating of that, and they call it plaid, okay? Which means blanket, okay? So let's talk about the next one, which I think is the funnest one, the easiest one. Yes, let's talk about, I have it here, and we'll talk about this again, is let's talk about check. Okay, so we have tartan, just think of the Scot Scottish kilts, and then we have the plaid, which is a knockoff version of those Scottish kilts, okay, and then also too, then the third one is check. Now in check, there is a gingham and a buffalo and then a window pane, but window pane is kind of hard to differentiate, so I'm not going to talk about that one, okay, but in the gingham sense, we all know what a gingham looks like if you ever thought of a red checkered tablecloth. Okay. Now the word checkers. Okay. When you hear the word check. Okay. And if you want to know, is that a, is that a gingham, a buffalo or a window pane? Just think if it thinks, makes you think of a checkerboard, then it's a check. That's the easiest way to know that. So here are some examples of a, a gingham check. Okay. And we just say gingham. Okay. But it's called a gingham check. Okay. But again, cause it looks like a checkerboard. Now the original ginghams, I believe were only in red and blue. Okay. I don't even know if I have a blue, blue. Okay. But again, and it's usually one color. Well, it's not usually it's one color and then white. That is a gingham. Okay. One color and a white. And again, it started with red and blue, but you know, as things move and industry moves. And isn't that something, how the garment industry influences every other industry? I mean, truly, truly, truly. I, I just will never get over that because what we see now in home decor and scrapbooking and crafting and all of that usually was an influence of something in the garment fashion industry. Truly, truly. Okay, so you see some of these ginghams are not white. They have different colors. So, but we still call it a gingham. But the true original gingham, is one color and white, okay? Simple, simple, beautiful, beautiful uh, gingham checks. We just call them ginghams, but it goes into the check category, okay? Now let's talk about, and there it is, there's that gingham that's in red and black. We're gonna talk about that because that is a special check, okay? We're gonna talk about that, okay? So that is the gingham. So now let's talk about the next one, which is called buffalo, which is basically gingham, Okay, but it is in a more, uh, what do you want to call that? That's a loose version, <laughs> okay? That's the more casual version, okay? You see, there's the, uh, if I'm in frame, there is the gingham, and this is the buffalo. So just think of a buffalo or big. Yes, that's a big... <laughs> A buffalo check is bigger than your gingham. That's how an easy way to do it. And then also too, checkerboard, checkerboard, checkerboard. That's how you know it's a check. It looks like it reminds you of a checkerboard, okay? So that's all a buffalo check is, is a loose, casual version of the gingham, okay? That's what it's called, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. And again, look at that red and blue. Just look at all that. I told you I have a lot of this in my inventory, okay? Because this is something that's been uh, different designs. It's been part of my life for, you know, ever since I've been born because of my mom and my grandmother being in a seamstress again garment industry okay so that is gingham versus buffalo and they're all checks okay and then again there's a window pane but I'm not going to talk about that because I guess the waters get very muddy after that okay but let's talk about one check in particular and everyone will know this and this is where things get uh, a little haywire and where things get confusing and this is why when I watch different videos, people don't know what to call it. And it's because of this right here. Okay. Now this is near and dear to my heart. Why? <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Okay. So this is basically a Buffalo check. It's bigger than a gingham. So this is a Buffalo check. Okay. But it's not white. Okay. It's this red and black. Okay. And so this is basically a Buffalo plaid. <laughs> Okay. Now, why is it called Buffalo Plaid? That is because there was a company or is a company in Pennsylvania called Woolrich. And Woolrich is the largest manufacturer of outdoor clothing in the United States and is still in existence. And it's in the top half of the state of my home state, Pennsylvania. 
in, it started in 1830. So in 1850, Woolrich came up with a design called Buffalo Plaid, okay? And so when you see something like this, this is a buffalo, this is a check pattern, but why is it called Buffalo Plaid? That is because of the company Woolrich, and that is the name they gave this. It's Buffalo Plaid, okay? And it is the signature trademark red and black, but it's really it's a check, but we call it Buffalo Plaid. So at the end of the day, no matter what you call it, you're going to be good. But it's interesting that this Buffalo Plaid uh, trademark uh, shirt that was created in Woolwich in the 18, let me see, the 1850. Yeah. So that was 170 years ago. Still going strong. <laughs> yes. And it is the most notable Buffalo Plaid. Okay, the red and the black, okay? And if you have sportsmen and hunters and outdoor people in your family, they all have a shirt like this, okay? Especially in Pennsylvania because this is where it originated, okay? Now, also to Woolrich, something uh, known uh, about Woolrich, I didn't know until a few years ago that Woolrich, not only is it from my home state of Pennsylvania, but they also, they su uh, provided supplies for the American Civil War. I didn't know that, so that was interesting. So, why does it get confusing? Because Woolrich company <laughs> they put a trademark on this buffalo plaid but it's really a buffalo check okay now uh you want to hear some scuttlebutt the reason why it was called buffalo plaid is because the designer of this pattern owned a herd of buffalo that is the scuttlebutt as to why it's called buffalo plaid yes and that came from my home state of pa Yes, yes. Again, the garment industry influences what other industries were involved in because this was a shirt, and now you can find this pattern in home decor. You can find it in linens and blankets and scarves, and so yes, absolutely. Isn't that amazing how the garment industry influences everything else? Okay, so that might have been a little bit more talk <laughs> about tartans, plaids, and checks, and you may wanted to know, but... At the end of the day, isn't it interesting to know and see the difference of Buffalo Plaid? And then we have, I'm going to talk about this paper pad, so hang on a minute. And then we have a Buffalo Check, <laughs> yes. And then we have Gingham on top of that. And then we have Plaids on top of that. And then we have Diagonal Plaids on top of that. And then we have the original tartan scottish uh pattern love that love that okay now i wanted to talk about that oh and i also have some uh i'll talk about some more oh right there it is there's that signature woolrich buffalo plaid trademark yes that is how all this buffalo plaid craze started back in the 1850s yes 170 years ago isn't that something okay and then again here's some more of that buffalo plaid check so sometimes when i've been watching videos people won't know what to call it do you call it a plaid you call it buffalo check yes you can call it anything it's all good <laughs> yes but that is clearly the difference and it's because of this signature red and black that's what started the whole ball of wax but at the end of the day what really started everything was the tartan pattern and that's why i started with that because that was the original pattern and i think everything else has just filtered through different industries different cultures and different countries and so there's the variations and that's why i wanted to share it it's very interesting okay now let's talk about this paper pad for a minute because at hobby lobby now i this says 2017 but i've recently bought this a month or so ago and it is 12.99 it's eight and a half by 11 but what is it called plaid tidings and in this you will find tartans you will find uh plaids and you will find checks so everything i talked about is in this one paper pad and it is an awesome awesome deal for 12.99 but an amazing awesome deal when you can get it for half off which is what i did okay so if you love this type of pattern and design definitely look at hobby lobby it's online as well and it's called plaid tidings and it's still available this year okay because i just got it about a month ago so that is <laughs> what I wanted to say, our little mini crash course on tartans, plaid, and checks. So I hope that I uh, gleaned a little bit of something because at the end of the day, there is a difference, okay? It's not just all plaid, but remember that saying that I said, and someone in the garment industry said this, uh, all tartans are plaids, but not all plaids are tartans. So tartans, yes, are in a class 
of their own. Absolutely. Okay, that's what I wanted to show for that. So that is our little mini crash course and our little tutorial on tartans versus plaid versus check. And sometimes it does get confusing, but at the end of the day, it's all good. It doesn't matter what you call it. Just use it and have fun. And then also too, you'll notice when you start looking for these type of designs, you'll notice them in washi and then also to your paper pads, what you have for loose papers. And then also too, I did want to mention that if this is the type of design and pattern that you like, definitely look into some Christmas collections. You'll find the tartan and plaid and checks, especially that buffalo plaid check. You'll see that in a lot of Christmas designs. It's very popular right now. So don't forget to look at the B sides of the Christmas and holiday collections that's hitting the shelves. Okay. And then also too, I will have a link below in the description box that will talk more about the tartans in the Scottish culture as far as clans. I think it's very interesting to look at those and see what some of the older ones are, which ones have trademarks. So I'll have that link below if you want some more future reading. It's all interesting. Okay, so that is all I have for today. Again, this was going to be inserted in a start to finish video, but it's all about learning. <laughs> yes, so here we go. And that way we can also look back on this if we wish to. So that's all I have for today at RTS. And so that means come back. You never know what we're going to learn. Bye.